I want to begin by thanking you uh, from the bottom of my very full heart for honoring, honoring me with your endorsement yesterday. And I am ready to be back in the work and building a bright future for the people of Minnesota and doing that with you. And the first order of business for us today is for me to introduce to you my running mate. Our job together, my fellow DFLers, leaders, is to build a bright future for all of us, an inclusive future for all of us. And I have given this question great thought. And when I considered who I would seek for a running mate, these are the things I thought about. I wanted to find someone who shared my same optimism and ambition for the state of Minnesota. Someone who shares my values, our values, and my work ethic. Someone who comes prepared with different experience and life experiences and different perspective than my own. And someone who would be my close partner, someone I trusted in the hard and exciting work ahead. And when I considered those things, I found a person who met those criteria. And I want to introduce you now to my friend, my colleague, and the next Lieutenant Governor for the State of Minnesota, Representative Aaron May Quaid. She's already helping me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Delegates, I am so happy to be here with you today. I met Aaron Murphy 12 years ago in a room that was a lot smaller than this, with a, a lot fewer people than this, but a lot of feelings like we have right now. When I met her, she asked me, what are you thinking about? You hear Aaron in that, right? What, do, what are you thinking about? What are you worrying about? And I told her what I was worrying about. I was worried about genocide in Darfur. I was worrying about discrimination that was happening on my campus. I was worrying about the fact that my generation was going to graduate into an economy that was the worst in a lifetime. And you couple that with the high cost of college, I thought I would never survive the amount of money I would need to pay back for my degree, let alone thrive as an adult. And she listened, Erin listened, she didn't placate me. She said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I decided to organize. Yeah. On campus, I organized the Genocide Intervention Network. I joined the student government to talk to the legislature about the high cost of college. And as soon as I graduated from college, I joined Barack Obama's team to elect a man who had a vision of hope and future for our nation. So in 2010, when I saw that we were borrowing from our students to balance our budget, billions of dollars in deficit, working families were losing their jobs, their homes. They weren't just worrying about the next few years, they were worrying about the next few weeks. I decided to organize. And I organized for Governor Mark Dayton and got him elected for a better Minnesota. And under his leadership with Aaron Murphy as majority leader, we passed the Women's Economic Security Act, we paid back our schools, we passed the anti-bullying bill, marriage equality, we waived the minimum wage, and all day kindergarten. And then we get to 2016. In 2016, I learned that students in my community were arriving at school hungry. They were hungry. Hungry kids can't learn, and we know that. I decided to organize. I knew I needed to organize, but I also knew it was time for me to lead. 
So I ran for office. I organized for myself. And I talked to my community. We talked about hunger. We talked about a woman's right to choose. We talked about renewable energy. We talked about clean land, air, and water. We talked about ending gun violence. We talked about it. And because we organized, because we had those conversations, I was the only Democrat to flip a seat in the State House in 2016. <laughs> And so here we are in 2018. We know too many Minnesotans are struggling with depression and anxiety. Kids as young as five are struggling with this. We know too many parents are kept out of the workforce because childcare costs more per year than they make in a year. We know that families like mine are foregoing or delaying having families at all because we don't have paid family leave. And we know that our cherished elders are not able to age and retire in place in the communities that they love because we have not invested in the infrastructure that lets them do so. And so when Aaron Murphy talks about the care agenda, health care, mental health care, child care, cherished elder care, that is why. Because for the last 12 years, I have been organizing. I have been leading, but Aaron Murphy has been traveling around this entire state listening to Minnesotans, and that is how she came up with the care agenda, because it is your agenda. It is your agenda. But also in 2018, we have literal Nazis and white supremacists marching in the streets. We are turning refugees away and we are vilifying black and brown folks and entire religions. Delegates, these are stories that belong in our history books, not on the front pages of our papers. We know that the moral arc of the universe is long and it bends towards justice, but it only bends if we do something about it. We have to bend it. We must do the work to bend that moral arc. And Aaron Murphy knows that Minnesotans don't have time for timid and tippy toe politics. And I'm joining her because I'm a leader and I'm an organizer. And leaders aren't timid, we're bold. And organizers don't tippy-toe, we door knock. We march, we rally, and we vote! And sometimes we sit in. So we know that Minnesotans are ready for policies driven by people and not partisanship. Minnesotans don't want or need a Wall Street lobbyist. They need the heart and tenacity and vision of a nurse and the passion and experienced leadership of an organizer. But we must do all of this work together. Together and together we will fight to end gun violence, to invest in mental health care, protect LGBTQ folks, including and especially trans women of color. We will serve our veterans that serve our nation. We will fully fund our schools. We will end hunger. We will destroy systemic racism. We will support our unions and the right to collectively bargain. We will defend our clean land, air, and water. We will slow and reverse the devastating effects of climate change. We will do that work together. So delegates, delegates, I have a question for you. Are you ready to fight? Yeah. Are you ready to see us lead? Yeah. We are ready to win. Thank you so much.